Welcome back. We are here on eToro looking at the commodities market and the precious metals market. Um, and this is going to be my daily forecast for Friday, October 29, 2020. If you'd like to support our channel, you're welcome to click the subscribe button down here in the corner. Hit the like button and the, the bell button to see our newest videos. So, as you can see, we have rallied quite a bit in the US dollar index. And this has had an enormous effect on commodities um, and the precious metals market. And it has also had an enormous effect on stocks as well. So, we rallied above the 50 moving average. Uh, we may go higher from here. We have pulled back a little bit. It's not... It's early still in the U.S. session, so we uh, we may see a lot more action um, in the coming hours. But at this point, we have pulled back quite a bit. We will find the resistance here at the 93.87, and then we also will find resistance here at 94.71. If we break both of these resistance levels, we will head towards the 200 moving average. And if that is the case then watch out for commodities and watch out for definitely precious metals and stocks as well. They will be tumbling because the last time we had a major, major rally was back here in March. And if you can look at the indices and also the, uh, the stocks and commodities and so on, they went the absolutely opposite way. So one of the main reasons why we have this movement today in the stock market is not just because the US dollar index is also because there is not going to be any stimulus before the election and there probably won't be any stimulus until January maybe February and that is next year 2021 um, the reason for that is that it is not possible to get a stimulus bill uh, past the Congress uh, before the election now and if Donald Trump loses the election, which he most likely will do, that's going to be absolutely horrible. And he will not be um, be willing to negotiate uh, with, the, uh, with the Democrats or anything. So that is the worst case scenario for the market. So, well, beware. So if you look at uh, WTI oil, we can see we have fallen significantly today so world economy is not doing well the coronavirus is still um, causing a lot of problems not just a lot of problems but absolutely chaos around the world at this point we haven't even reached uh, the coldest months of the of the year um, so we may see this just drop significantly further we'll have major support uh, here around the, the 37 and also 36 uh, but every rally towards the 50 moving average at this point is basically a selling opportunity if we look at the technical indicators for for oil we can see that they are they are uh, well they're looking horrible at the moment at the moment the MACD is pointed to lower levels the stochastic is pointed to lower levels the SOGOS the CCI and also the RSI only the RSI is at the 37 at this point. So we are nearing uh, oversold um, uh, area at this point. But if we break this support area here, that opens the door to 35 and then to 30 and then beyond that. Uh, we may see something similar to this. It is not very likely that we will see something like this. This was due to that there was a lot, too much production in the world economy. The major oil producers have cut significantly uh, down on production. So we shouldn't see as, um, this kind of movement. Uh, but we may see a gradual decline towards the $30 level and probably down to $25 level. So no interest basically of, of buying this. This is basically selling every single rally every time we get across the 50, uh, close to the 50 moving average. So if we look at natural gas, natural gas has rallied a little bit. We have, we tried to uh, go past these highs of yesterday, but we pulled back. At this point, we, we may go higher. That is a possibility. But the technical indicators are not looking as promising as they have for 
quite some time. If you look at the MACD, it's getting very close to the signal line. The stochastic is showing sign of weakness. The same goes for the CCI and the RSI is basically on the edge of being overbought. So at this point, we're just waiting for a pullback towards the 50 moving average in order to enter this market. It's just too risky to enter here. If you buy here, the market can fall uh, towards the 50 and then you're basically stuck with a really bad trade. And selling this is, well, why do you sell in a upward trend? That is not what you basically do. So if you look at copper, Copper has fallen towards the 50 moving average as expected. We did pull back from the 50 moving average, so there are buyers that are coming in and pushing this price up. But technical indicators for copper are looking dreadful. And as the US dollar index is basically appreciating, that will basically have, a, have an enormous effect on basically copper. If the 50 moving average breaks, we get a red candlestick underneath the 50 moving average. That opens the door to 2.9 and then to 2.8 and then all the way to 2.7 and also 2.6. Major uh, producers of copper are expecting price at the end of the year to be around 2.6. So we have some um, movement to the downside. And if you look at these technical indicators, they are not looking good. They are very bearish and we most likely will go significantly lower from here. But at this point, we need to break the 50 moving average. It may be a lot of choppy trading um, before that, but this rally made no sense whatsoever. Probably pure speculations of uh, additional stimulus uh, that got people buying here, but this was a nonsense rally. This market will mostly uh, fall due to the fact that there's just that not the uh, demand for copper out there as there is not the demand for oil. So at this point, if the 50 moving average breaks, that is basically a very boring sign that we are going significantly lower. So if you look at gold, so gold did make the move that I was expecting. We have been trading sideways. We have pulled back, traded sideways, pulled back, traded sideways. And I would not be surprised if we had like two or three days of basically pullbacks until we get towards the $1,800 range. And there you will find that we will trade sideways and then we'll, uh, uh, then we'll go towards the upside. There's just too much resistance above. We have the 50 moving average. We also have a significant resistant area here so if we break the 50 moving average we get close to this uh, area here that will basically mean that it will well it will be quite difficult to get through this area to be fairly honest we tried such a long time several several even a month here tried to get to the 2000 and 2001 level we just didn't manage that we are breaking down now as we have this pattern of breaking down, trading sideways, breaking down, trading sideways, and so on. So I don't believe that will go further than the 200 moving average. That will be significant support, but technical indicators for gold are looking terrible at this point, as they are for most commodities and precious metals. So MACD is turning around. The stochastic is pointing to lower levels. The same goes for the CCI. The same goes for the RSI. So at this point, if this level here breaks, if the lows here break, then we are going towards the 800, um, 1800 level. We can look at the Fibonacci retracements as well um, to see where, most where we probably will go. And as you can see, the first line of defense here is at uh, 38.2. That is basically at the bottom here, where we pulled back uh, recently, only a few weeks ago. If that breaks, we'll head towards the 50 Fibonacci retracement, and that is just coincided with the 200 moving average, and this is probably as far as this market may go. There will be a lot of spending from governments all around the world, from central banks, and so on, and that will basically just pressure down the price of gold up in the long run. At this point, we are bringing down um, and we have some uh, way to go yet before we go higher. So if you look at silver, we can see that silver has fallen 
as basically further than gold, but we are finding support here where we have previous bound support. So if this level breaks, that opens the door to probably 21 or $20. There's just too much resistance above. I don't expect, we didn't even get close to the 50 moving average. And even though we get to the 50 moving average and break it, we have additional resistance above here and that will pressure this price down. If this breaks, that opens the door towards the $20 level and the 200 moving average. Very similar to gold, we have a Fibonacci retracement here. And as you can see, the first line of defense here of 38.2 is right at around $20, $23. And if that breaks, that opens the door to 20.88 and then to 200 moving average at 19.8. I don't expect us to go that far. I am bullish on gold and also bullish on silver in the long run due to the fact that we will see a lot of government expenditure and um, and uh, massive amount of liquidity injected to the market in the coming um, probably year or years as long as this crisis um, is ongoing. So if we look at Kokoa, well, Kokoa did exactly what we expected. It, we uh, we ran, uh, rallied all the way to the you know, 50 moving average and had a massive pullback. At this point, we are going to test the lows of the previous week here at the 2.3828. Uh, if that breaks, that opens the door to uh, these levels at 2.2. And after that, uh, we open the doors to 2.085. We are trading within the highs um, of 2.7, all the way up here, to the lows of 2.087. And we are trading in a range, or we could say mid-range here, between 2.5 and 2.3. We have been, get rid of that, we have been in this range for several, um, several periods in recent times. We over here back in April, we also traded within this range. And we also here in August and the end of June, we also traded within this range. And now again. So it may well be that this is the bottom for the time being. If this breaks, then of course that opens the door to much lower levels. But if we pull back from here, then we'll probably just go trading within this channel. If we break above this level here and the 50 moving average, that opens the doors to 2.7. So, well, at this point, we are just in the middle of the range. So, if you look at Platinum, we can see that Platinum is still trading within the 50 moving average and the 200 moving average. We have a high here of uh, 89096, and we have a low here of 855. If this breaks to the downside, we have an enormous amount of resist, uh, res support underneath uh, here. I can draw it up. So we'll have this as support and this entire area here will also act as support. So I'm not favoring the downside. I am favoring the upside. If we have an enormous, um, if, if the US dollar index appreciates significantly and the world economy gets much worse, then we may see something similar to what happened back in February and in March, that we have a complete collapse of the of platinum. But at, the, at this point, there is a lot of support underneath. If we break the, 20, the 50 moving average, that opens the door to 941 and also to 979 and then to 1000. So if you look at sugar, sugar had, the, well, it tried to rally, but we are probably witnessing a pullback of, uh, in the sugar market. Uh, so that was anticipated because we have been overbought for a significant amount of time. Both the RSI and the CCI have indicated that for a very long time, and it has been anticipated that we will receive, 
see a pullback towards the 50 moving average. We also see that the stochastic and the MACD are turning around. So a pullback towards the 50 moving average basically is a buying opportunity. Whether or not we get all the way towards the, down to the 50 moving average, that is to be seen. It is not very likely as we tried to um, test the 50 moving average here. And basically we saw buyers come in and push this market significantly up. But at this point, it's just too risky to buy. And in order to sell this, it's basically you don't sell um, uptrends. We are, we have a significant support line here. If the 50 moving average breaks, then this will be our next line of the defense. Um, but at this point, just wait for a pullback here. It, all the indicators are showing that it is coming uh, tomorrow, uh, one day from two days from now, one, three days from now. This market is going to go lower before it goes higher. So if you look at wheat, we can see that we continue our pullback towards the 50 moving average. Technical indicators for wheat are looking significantly worse now, both the MACD, stochastic, CCI, and the RSI. It is not. Um, it is not a buying opportunity yet. We have a ma major pullback here, even though we broke down. But I'm looking for something similar to this. If we get an uh, area where we basically are overbought and we get the CCI turning around, that is basically a signal that we are uh, we are basically at the bottom of this market and we are ready to go higher. So. We are in uptrend. This has been a very, very parab parabolical move to the upside. We need a pullback towards the 50 moving average. It'll probably be a lot of choppiness uh, until we get there, but we'll get there eventually. And what we're looking at is something similar to this, where we get a gray area indicating um, over uh, that this market is oversold and that we are ready to go back up to the upside. So. Hope you find this video helpful. You're welcome to support our channel by subscribing. Hit the bell button and the like button in order to see our newest videos. Good luck and thank you very much.